yesterday was so much different than it used to be. It used to be on Wednesday, and anybody could ask him a question. It was pretty, it was pretty cool. And I fired off some bombs at Goodell over the years. I had a good time with it. But I also struck out many times because it just got much more restricted. Well, now it's, you know, invite only on a Monday. I think they were doing it in the Chiefs locker room at Reliance Stadium for like 50 people, something like that. Invitation only this year. Invitation what? only. On, oh, yeah. On Monday, so it gets yeah. superseded by the opening night. All this was done on purpose because the there's always contentious things that come out of this Roger Goodell press availability. So I'm sorry, d Matt, go ahead. No, no, no. I, I think, um, oh, gosh, you know, who was the uh, journalist that I'm thinking of? Jim uh, Trotter. Jim Trotter, yeah. And, and there was a reporter from Kansas City who I think was speaking on behalf of Jim Trotter, basically, asking Roger Goodell about the diversity in the NFL offices. And Goodell defended that vehemently, saying we're 51% um, uh, female and minority uh you know, uh, employees in the NFL right now, and we can do better in different departments. So, so there was a question that snuck in, but Jim Trotter was very, he got fired. I think Chad, right. He did um, for more or less confronting Goodell while working for Goodell. So talk about courage, my goodness, you know, you're asking your boss an incredibly controversial um, racist uh, insinuating based question. So I think that was the end of big open uh, pressers. But still, it was asked yesterday. However, you're right. It was buried. I mean, do you guys even know? I mean, did you pay attention? Are we seeing any stories about Roger Goodell today in the presser? No, nothing, Chad. I had to go to Pro Football Talk to to get the, the, the breakdown and what some of the things he talked about. Because, yeah, the NFL is trying to bury this annual press availability, which was the biggest press availability for Roger Goodell and the commissioner, Throughout the entire year. Yeah. Now they're trying to, you know, put a, a lid on that. So it's a, yeah, it's unfortunate when asked difficult questions, powerful people find ways to not answer difficult questions. Um, and I think the NFL, while certainly is, is, is continuing to make progress as far as coaching ranks, we've seen a number of black coaches hired this year. Uh, at the same time, um, the league office does not reflect the player population, does not reflect uh, the advances in, in coaching. Uh, again, having been there myself and walked around to every single department, I would have to say that was true. So if I were Jim Trotter, an employee of the NFL, and I walked around, it would feel a bit odd after being there for years that, hey, something's not right here. We do not reflect the the viewing audience. We do not reflect the the player population. We don't reflect the diversity within the, the coaching rooms. This is a separate entity over here at 345 uh, Madison Avenue. So, um, yeah, Roger Goodell in the NFL chose to sidestep and avoid that possibility uh, of that by having an invitation only presser on Monday night where it would be superseded by Super Bowl opening night and all the insanity of, of Super Bowl media day. So the, the, the questions were the questions that he was asked, were, were they prescripted? Did they have to get them approved? Do you think D Mac? No, uh, I don't think it was quite like that, but they're, inevitably predictable there's there's the questions about you know health uh concerns um well, kick there wasn't there was a there i i did laugh that one of the reporters that got in i mean i guess it's a story about taylor swift i suppose but you want to talk about a softball for the commissioner and to to be invited into that room and ask a question about Taylor Swift. I don't know, man. What's the question? I mean, that that's a question that that's the question that Goodell would love, right? Which he did. He said he thinks she's great. What else is he gonna say? You know, it's like, wow, I, I'm in Vegas. I work for a media outlet that's been invited. I'm here, and I'm gonna ask a question about fucking Taylor Swift. Well, I mean, DMAC, that is. Wow. But that is like one of the main storylines at the Super Bowl is Taylor Swift. I mean, what what is what else are people talking about? No one's talking about the Niners and the Chiefs matchup. No one's talking about Andy Reid and Kyle Shanahan's system. Nobody's talking about any of that. Patrick Mahomes going for number three. Nobody's talking about it. It's all yeah, about you, Taylor Swift. You ask the commissioner about Taylor. What, what's even the question? The like, question is, you know, did or, I don't how know. How do you man. feel about Taylor yeah. Swift? Yeah, it it's shit. ridiculous. I think it's a ridiculous question as as well. I understand that it's a topical subject. Sure. But I think for the commissioner, it's a ridiculous question. When there's so many pressing issues around the NFL, the, the question from Jim Trotter from two years ago still has never been adequately answered. Uh, health and safety concerns. Uh, 
yeah, I mean, the, the changes to the game. The officiating was awful this year compared to the technology we have to correct it. And how come the NFL hasn't embraced that more further and deeply? There's so many other things that I would ask before I dug into a Taylor Swift question if I had the opportunity to talk to the commission about anything. The only reason you ask a Taylor Qu Swift question, trust me, I've been there and I've literally done this, is to get yourself attention for asking mm. that type of question. Mm. Um, so that's right up my alley. <laughs> so what's uh, What are your top three attention-getting questions you've ever asked? Uh, I asked about Broncos ownership way before people were talking about it. And my uh, guy, Michael Silver, killed me on NFL Network just because yeah. he and I had a beef at the time. Um, and he apologized later for that, and we made good. Uh, I asked about uh, concussions. Would you let your own kids play football? But he doesn't have any boys. He has two girls. That being said, I asked him. Um, uh, and then the most the most famous question that I ever asked him was, of course, um, have you been drug tested? Uh, because <laughs> the marijuana thing was such a big deal. Now, I'll tell you, um, in regards to all of my questions, my, my big three, um, weed is like whatever. Seriously, I mean, it's it's not like they promote that you go, uh, you know, partake, but they don't really test or or at least the punishment isn't what it was. And the testing is way different than what it was in terms of you have to be smoking a chip. Like, yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, safety issues. I think the NFL is safer. It is. Um, they've backed way off on certain things. ACL injuries are down. Concussions are down. I think wearing those big. uh you know, bobblehead sort of things actually does work. It seems to. And in terms of Broncos ownership, well, that's done now, right? I mean, it's a wrap. So I was asked, like, what would I ask the commissioner? I, I guess officiating, you know, how do you make that better? But in all honesty, fellas, and if I'm just naive, I'm naive. But the NFL seems like this crazy rocket ship that seems unpenetrable. It's just going to the moon and beyond. I don't know what I would ask him now, I guess. What would you ask the commissioner specifically? What would the question be? Uh, me, I would probably ask him. So the, I, I was just at this NFL benefits meeting a couple uh, on the weekend. Uh, former players um, trying to understand the labyrinth of benefits that are available to it. And it's very, very complicated. Each one has its own application process and approval and this and that. And, and there's a total and permanent disability payout <clears throat> if you can prove that you're super duper fucked up and a lot of guys try to you know spend their lives trying to convince this board that they're super fucked up and maybe they end up getting um, convincing them that they're super fucked up and they get a total and permanent payout well then you can't even get a real job and if you make over thirty thousand dollars a year that payment goes away there's there seems to be an incentive to show the league how messed up you are and no incentive to get healthy why is that why is there no incentive for mm. guys to live healthier lives and prove that they're getting better? Because when you played in the NFL, man, you had doctors and trainers all around you at all times, all times. Your job was your body. Your job was your health. And that takes a lot of time to be healthy like that. So now that you're not in that world anymore, it does still take time to be healthy. You have to commit hours per day to try to get yourself back on track health wise, but you don't have people doing that and you don't have any funding for that. I think the NFL should provide an incentive to get healthy, understanding the issues that players have. Why are there no incentives for that? Well, that's what I would that's, that's what I would ask. That sounds phenomenal, man. That see, you need a player to ask that question. Nobody else is even gonna understand it. Nobody else is even gonna have any sort of context for that. That'd be a brilliant question. Uh, I'd be fascinated to hear his answer. Chad, what you, what's your answer to that, Chad? Because you're uh, you're in the, those circles more than I am. Uh, no, I think our medical system is that way. They want to treat a specific issue, not look at a, the, the system, the systemic part of, of it all and how it all ties together. So for the NFL to offer rewards for neurocognitive, you can get money for that. Um, you know, for the concussion study, I had some conversations with some friends who were disappointed that they weren't more damaged from concussions because yeah. they were afraid that they were going to fail their concussion board review. And I was like, it's actually good that you fail this. You mm -hmm. don't want to be so neurologically damaged that you get money from this. I know you're cheap. You're chasing a, a, a cheap payday here, but it's actually good that you're not in, in that place. 
So, yes, there needs to be some kind of incentive for players to continue to find ways to take care of themselves, as opposed to all the incentives are negative within the um, damages part of the NFL possibilities. Now, as far as, you know, the benefits program, there's an annuity, there's a severance, there's a 401k, there's a health savings plan, there's all those various pieces of it all, which are there in help in place to help you take care of yourself after you're done playing. But from a medical standpoint, to your point, Nate, all the medical outcomes that benefit you are negative. So you are incentivized to report things in a worse way than they actually are. And to, I think in some ways, in, to actually believe that you are worse than you actually are. Rather, than, Because when a former player here in town who's very famous, does a lot of media, was going through the process of trying to apply for benefits, they actually followed him around with a camera and got... Wow video of him at a local uh, hardware store picking up supplies for his yard. So that's how far the NFL is willing to go to try to deny players who played a decade plus in the league when they have clear damage. Yes, because I, I want to take care of my yard does not mean I was not damaged by the mm. game. But again, they incentivize you negatively to not be able to do those kind of things. Um, there's also, yeah. you know, if you – you can get awarded ter total and permanent disability, and like I said, if you make thirty thousand dollars or more a year, they pull that uh, they pull that benefit. Unless you work for the NFL, then you can double dip, and they're okay with that. You can still get your total and permanent if you're also working for an NFL team or the NFL itself. Then it's cool, but if you're not working for the NFL, then it's not cool. And these sorts of uh, dichotomies, sort of. Um, uh, hypocrisies are are things that um, are we're pissing guys off at this meeting for sure, I bet, I bet. and and, um, and continue to be things that make you say hmm when it comes to the NFL and their treatment of former players. Guys, great conversation. It would be interesting if there was a press conference for journalists and there was a Goodell press conference with ex players. Wouldn't that mm, be interesting? That would be you know, very interesting um, because there would be concerns brought up. Boy, you got to actually, I'm thinking about that. Why isn't that a thing? Like, why isn't there um, that sort of availability? That's one to work on right there. Yeah. Troy Vincent is a part of the, you know, the upper levels of the NFL office now. Um, and he is the guy who I think Goodell counts on to speak to former players because Troy Vincent was a former player, Pro Bowl player, played a long time, a decade plus in the league. So he's that guy in place. Roger Goodell can handle all the big wigs and the media and the Jerry Jones of the world. And then Troy Vincent can speak to the players. Yeah. And then just have a ding dong press conference so I can ask him about Taylor Swift and shit, you know, yes. like, <laughs> get my clicks up. All right, boys. Um, fascinating conversation as always. Love you guys. We'll talk tomorrow and then off to Vegas as we uh, cover Super Bowl week in our own kill you with truth. Um, chuckle at pain style. There we go. We'll see you. Bye.